DeviceNet? Not familiar with it? Well, let's take a journey through the automation world of DeviceNet. DeviceNet is an application-level protocol used in the automation environment. It is a communication tool that allows you to logically talk between a PLC, or Programmable Logic Controller, and many control devices, such as motors, conveyors, flow meters, level sensors, etc. Instead of the PLC talking directly to discrete I.O. modules, it talks via a DeviceNet scanner. It was originally developed by Allen Bradley, which is a Rockwell automation brand, and they decided to share this new technology with others and make it an open network. Before we get started on today's video, if you love our videos, be sure to click the like button below. Then make sure to click subscribe and the little bell to receive notifications of new RealPars videos. This way, you never miss another one. DeviceNet is now managed by Open DeviceNet Vendors Association, or ODVA, an organization that develops standards and allows third-party vendors to utilize the network protocol. DeviceNet follows the Open Systems Interconnection, or OSI, model that uses seven layers, which are physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application. It is based on the Common Industrial Protocol, or CIP, and uses the three upper layers of CIP starting at session, while the bottom four layers have been adapted to the DeviceNet application. The physical layer consists of a combination of cables, nodes, taps, and termination resistors in a trunk-line, drop-line topology. We will discuss these physical components in just a bit. For the data link layer, DeviceNet uses the Controller Area Network, or CAN standard, that handles all the messaging between controllers and devices. The network and transport layers of DeviceNet establish a connection with the device by using connection IDs for the nodes, consisting of the MAC ID of a device and a message ID. The valid range of node addresses is 0 to 63, giving you a total of 64 possible connections. The advantage of the connection ID is that it enables DeviceNet to identify duplicate addresses by looking at the MAC ID and signaling to the user that it needs to be fixed. Now that we have looked at the structure of the DeviceNet application layers, let's look at the part of DeviceNet that we can put our hands on. The genius behind DeviceNet is that it joined the power and the signal into one cable, saving money and reducing the need for multiple cables which utilize more space. There are five types of cable with three that are round, and two that are flat. They are thick round, thin round, class one round, quick link flat, and quick link light flat. Which one you choose is determined by the distances and physical limitations of your application. You can use the round, thick or thin cable for either trunk or drop lines. The flat is used for trunk lines, and the class one drop cable is used for drops. They all use twisted pairs of wire, one pair for the 24 volt DC power and one pair for the signal. There is also a shield wire used in the grounding process. The cable that you choose to fit your application will be based mainly on distance because there are specific limits to the lengths that will allow maximum data rates. These distances are measured by two variables trunk line distance, and total drop line length. Device net data rates are 125, 250, or 500 kilobits per second. The longer the length needed will result in a slower data rate and vice versa. Thick round cable has a range of maximum length of 1,640 feet 
at 125 kilobits per second to a maximum length of 328 feet at 500 kilobits per second. Thin round cable has the same maximum length of 328 feet for all three data rates of 125, 250, and 500 kilobits per second. The quick link flat cable ranges from 1,378 feet at 125 kilobits per second to 246 feet at 500 kilobits per second. The quick link light flat cable ranges from 1,148 feet at 125 kilobits per second to 180 feet at 500 kilobits per second. Since there are no predetermined cord lengths, you can put connections to the flat cable anywhere on the line, making this choice great for device placement. The trunk line requires a 121 ohms, 1%, 0.25 watts, or larger terminating resistor at each end of the trunk and directly connected across the signal wires, blue and white. The terminating resistors reduce electrical noise and without them, in their correct place, the device net will not work properly. The drop lines connect the devices to the trunk line, and the data rate you choose determines the total drop line length allowed. The biggest restriction for a drop line is that the maximum cable distance from any device to the trunk line is 20 feet. The maximum total drop length for each data rate is 512 feet at 125 kilobits per second. 256 feet at 250 kilobits per second, and 128 feet at 500 kilobits per second. Once again showing that at higher rates, you get shorter distances your network can reach, and lower data rates get you farther reaching capabilities. You can connect the trunk line to the devices using multiple types of taps and connectors. Devices can be attached to these taps and connectors either directly to the trunk line or by branching or by daisy chaining them together. This choice will impact the total drop length calculation because the direct connections are considered zero drops while branching or daisy chaining adds to the calculation. These connections were specifically designed to allow devices to be replaced without disrupting the network. Now that we have the physical network constructed, let's talk about the software side that is an interface to configure our device net network. Alan Bradley developed RS Networks for DeviceNet to be able to map and assign addresses to all the devices in the network. The RS Networks for DeviceNet uses either a graphical or spreadsheet layout to map out the network and then the configuration is set up in all the devices and then downloaded to the DeviceNet scanner. The DeviceNet scanner is a hardware piece that resides in the PLC chassis and talks to the PLC through the back plane of the chassis. DeviceNet uses electronic data sheets, or EDS, that are simple text files that contain all the information to identify a device and assist in commissioning them onto the network. The advantages of DeviceNet are low cost, widespread acceptance, high reliability, efficient use of network bandwidth, and power available on the network. The disadvantages of DeviceNet are limited bandwidth, limited message size, and maximum cable length. It is stated over and over in many documents that 90% to 95% of all DeviceNet problems are one of two things a cabling issue, or you don't have the correct EDS file registered in RS networks for DeviceNet. This makes DeviceNet a great network when looking at the overall picture of that. Do you think it could work for your application? Maybe so. Want to learn PLC programming in an easy to understand format and take your career to the next level? Head on over to realpars.com.